Hello my sock universe, is it too much to say it was an Easter miracle that Lusk today got their first win of the season? Yes, I'm shooting this on Sunday, probably post on Monday, but yay! Seventh game of the new year and Lusk finally found a win and I already said in a short video they also snapped a non-scoring streak that lasted for more than five games, which was ridiculous to be honest. Uh, all gone. There was also a big talking point ahead of, of the game that the dead ball C situations are really a pain that Lusk is uh, missing a lot of uh, potential there. Goal came from a corner. And so this game, although it did not have huge implications on the Austrian league, but <laughs> no huge implications for me, will take center stage in this review video because we had a really nice outing. Although it was Easter Sunday, but you know, you're together with the family, that is what it's all about. And I really hate that the Bundesliga exactly put it on that day because it also meant that the attendance was one of the lowest that we had ever since we moved to the new stadiums with 9,400. But you know, it's not a good day. And especially if you have the early kickoff at 2.30 where most people aren't even done with their Easter meal here in Austria. And uh, <laughs> notwithstanding the last home game of the Championship round is on Mother's Day, which is another one. Yeah, I can Sturm Graz who might actually pull in a few more fans. So yeah, uh, that was rather curious. Very happy about that. However, we also have to talk that we had two big head-to-heads uh, this round on the very top of the table and on the very bottom of the table. And while things could have gotten a much, um, you know, there could have been flip-flops at the uh, bottom and the top, the situation got a whole lot, lot clearer. We have now two C situations where there's a five-point cushion between first and second and between 11th and 12th place. And those are the two big results that we had uh, this round. That's much is for certain. But I want to start, yes, it's the early game. I want to start in Linz. Uh, Lask keep a third spot with this win that they got. And yes, the win was a little bit of a dirt, dirt, dirt win. It was also for the first time. I had a little uh, jacket with me because I didn't know the weather, but it was so warm that very quickly it was the first time I could be in short sleeves at the stadium, which is also nice. It was sunny even, uh, everything fine. I was enjoying the game overall. I was It really was a um, game that was not that pretty to watch. I always said that Lask had a little bit more of the game. There was also a shift in the lineup again, no Robert Schul in there, a little bit retooling of the defense. Uh, also Berisha out, therefore Jovicic in on the front, Young Havel. So, you know, it was kind of an e e e experimental one. But I think overall, I think a team worked hard. The thing is up front, um, you can see, especially with Mare Ljubicic on number nine, uh, he is missing confidence. It's just he's second guessing himself too much uh, when he got substituted. There were unfortunately some boos, which is something I really, really hate because he's a young guy that is struggling for form. He needs support and you shouldn't boo a person like that. That's it. Let's get a little bit more of the game. Barely created chances. There was a header from Lou. Luke looking on the other side. Um, uh, Klagenfurt had two chances uh, at, at the end of the first half. Where Laval is uh, safe, but both were kind of from an acute angle. So don't think it was that big of, of a chance. Second half, there was a really, really, really huge uh, chance by Carvina that Laval, I mean, he was one on one with Laval and Laval saved it. Laval, the best player of the season for Lask, I have to say. Meanwhile, yes, he made a uh, error uh, last year but other than that I uh, so many great great performances and he saved quite a few points there as well and then you get the goal uh Horvath corner look look and head it in and then I was actually hoping that Klagenfurt will open up a little bit more which uh, will enable us counter chances and yes Uso two minutes after the goal had actually such a big counter ch uh, chance missed by that much the goal and yeah, I really thought it was. It should have been probably pro pro two 0 was more on, on the wall than uh, a one one because there were not really many chances. Although at some time Klangford played a little bit too uh, complicated. But yes, big celebrations with me and my family. We were really happy with that. That that one and also the last players after making a, a, a huddle on midfield where they finally celebrated and they went to the fans and could celebrate the win. Happy Easter, everyone. Uh, this was one because if you don't beat Klangfurt, I think you will have a hard time in this group. 
It also means that you are now in a dogfight, I think, for third place with Rapid Wien, who seemingly are finding form, but more on them a little bit later. I want to first go into the uh, uh, relegation round, or you know, as they call it, qualification round, which is a name I really cannot uh, do much with. Uh, Blau West Linz, uh, the city rival, went to Austria Vienna and got a big boost. I mean, this was not a game where you thought that they should uh, win a whole lot. Uh, to begin with, but um, uh, Austria was already reduced uh, to 10 men in 17th minute uh, because Wells got his second yellow card, young young player making starting debut. Um, and then, yeah, it's one of those. I mean, I saw, I followed a little, a little bit of the game also. Austria Vienna tried to actually still win this one, have a better chance of a blow as Linz, but they were too clumsy to convert it, so it ends in a logically nil nil draw. We gotta say that was fair. Uh, we had also a nil in between Wolfsburg and Altach, which is a big chance missed by Wolfsburg to actually overtake Austria Vienna. Um, and Alter, you know, establishing themselves up up there. But the big one was, of course, Austria Lustner against uh, Tirol, a game that you could not really watch. Let's be frank. Uh, Tirol converted the first chance through Nick Prelets, were overall the more mature team. Then it was a red card for Kennedy Boateng, and Buxer from a penalty uh, 10 minutes later makes it 2 0 for Tirol. Yes, Diaby pulls one back late, and maybe there was a little bit of a chance, chance there, but overall Tirol were, were the better, better team. And given the uh, form of these two teams, I think Tirol is the one that deserves to stay in the league. Lustenau, unfortunately, are not good Gorgona for the league anymore so this was a huge result losing now find themselves now five points off of the pace and look more or less like the team that's not gonna get re relegated yes it is probably still a really really tight because you know you have three teams at 11 points lose now at six it's not impossible that one of these fall down for instance blah blah with Linz for some good results ahead against the top teams against their immediate neighbors they have not been doing well so there's a slight worry for for them i'm less worried about Altach uh in that sense uh, and up, up, up top, yeah, it's between us, Austria and Wolfsburg, one of, one of those uh, will then play for another European spot. Then, a uh, big one also this afternoon, the same time that Lusk played, uh, Rapid really dominated Hartberg. Hartberg a little bit fall, falling off of the base, they played so brilliantly last year. Also a team trying to find form, to be honest. And yeah, uh, after th I mean, it was already a chance in the first minute. After three minutes, they're down to Mark Markrull, then they give away a hand penalty how the referee did not see that but I think it could have been already been two by Rapid back then. Um, Grull makes it two, 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 two nil. Uh, then FDI is sent, sent off with a yellow red I think it was a little bit rough uh, and Grull in, in, in between had also made it three nil already. Huge win for Rapid. I think this Rapid team uh, if they can stay out of trouble off the field this is a team that uh, looks dangerous now under new coach Klaus I gotta say and the way things are going, I mean, Lask is still one point ahead, ahead of Rapid and all the duels between those two have ended in a draw. Well, I think this is a team where I say, Ooh, they might actually be good enough for a third spot. Unfortunately, not coming easy from my lips. And then we had the big one, the top clash, uh, with Salzburg being just two points ahead of Sturm Graz. Really, really tight game. At times it looked a little bit like a tennis match going back and forth and you know, pressing left, pressing right. Um, while Sturm may have had the overall more of the game, the clearer chances came clear from Salzburg, who through Fernando had at least three really good chances to score a goal where, you know, they were not well uh, defending. And this is what Sturm let Sturm down in in the end. It was a throw in that lands at Bitstrup, who uh, where the ball goes over the Sturm defender and he won tight at times. It takes a slight deflection. 1 0 right early in the first half. Uh, yes, there was a big chance for an e equals with a shot on, on, on onto the post. But Salzburg also got a goal through Pavlovich where it was not conclusive whether he was offside or not. Uh, the linesman put the offside flag up, so they left it this way. So I think Salzburg showed that they are really, really clinical and they take better care of their chances, where Sturm have to work really, really hard and are maybe just not quite there. Uh, it also has to be said, if Sturm do their job against the other opponents, and this is the problem, this is what you gotta do. 
you cannot win it on the head to head to Salzburg uh, necessarily. You have to win it against the other all opponents where Salzburg sometimes really draw points themselves. But if you lose the head to heads, you see, you, you, you see what I mean. And then the big talking point was, of course, deep in stoppage time, uh, where Gorna Durth uh, just takes the ball and doesn't want to give it to the Sturm players, and a big melee ensues, where um, he first gets a yellow card and then a, a red card, but Goran Stankovic uh, basically wrestles him down, which is so unlike him, to be honest. Uh, and then Lavalle is also sassed enough by putting a, uh, his hand on the neck of another player. Curiously enough, Soleil, who pulls Goran Stankovic like this out of the melee, uh, he should have been sent off as well. Now, uh, interesting enough, those two teams will meet in the cup in the midweek. Uh, Sturm Graz will have to play Lusk uh, next, so all these players are probably missing those are straight red cards for unsportsmanlike conduct and, and so on, that I could very well see going for two games at the very least. So rather rough, rather emotional and a big win for Salzburg, who are now of course the odds, and they were before that, the odds on favorite to win uh, the, the league as to be we do to expect it and it might be the last big chance for Sturm Graz to really challenge them because I think that team might also go certain ways between third and fourth it's of course been Lusk and Rapid and then we have Klangfurt and Hartberg vying for this last European spot sixth place doesn't get anything seventh and eighth have a chance to play against the fifth place team to make it into Europe. Uh, the upcoming round we first have a cup semi-final in the mid mid midweek where uh, Leom hosts on Wednesday Rapid. Will there be another upset? I I only honestly doubt Rapid off field issues aside, Rapid sh can be really really da dangerous and I think they're good for a cup final and then Salzburg is hosting Sturmkreis of course in the big one. Um, yeah we gotta see how how it will turn to turn out, especially with so many players missing, especially if Sule will be uh, also banned. Then uh, the upcoming round, we uh, in the bottom group we have Alta playing against Tirol. You know this is probably the closest duel. Uh, other than Lusna, probably will have to get something from Austria, which which they will not. And let's see what Blauweiss can do against Wolfsburg. Last, uh, it's the next one is, you know, uh, we have Klagenfurt against Hartberg. This might give us an idea who will finish in the fifth uh, spot to play in the playoff. And then Sturm Graz and Lusk. Um, I like the idea that Sturm Graz have two players missing and they have to play the hard cup game. Potentially this might play in Lusk's favor, although as we saw, uh, goal scoring lets Lusk down. And the question is, of course, if Robert Schul can come back. And then Salzburg against Rapid. Um, I think this might be closer this time than we usually would expect. That was it for me from the Bundesliga. Let me know what you think about the CAA situation there. It looks very much decided on top, on the on, on the bottom, so it's only about Euro, Euro, European sports that keeps it a little bit exciting. In any case, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, and I'll talk to you soon about more things in my soccer universe. Bye! Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!